What you doing, buddy? Pulling stuff. Pulling what? I don't know. Clecos. What is Clecos? Clecos. Clecos. What are we working on? Airplane. What kind of airplane? Airplane. RV10? No, I don't know. An airplane. Do we need these parts? We will, yeah. That's why we save them. Hello, so eventually coming up, you're gonna see that this gets built vertically or finished vertically on a stand, but to get it started, I just had it on kind of a work table clamp down. And here's just a few photos before I show the video. So in this picture, I was just trying to figure out placement. That is not where the comm antennas end up going. So don't use that as a reference. That was just a picture I took to kind of figure it out. But later I'll talk about the comm antennas and then here, Again, just some different pictures just in case you need for your build or to give you some perspective. This is the stand I built. I talk about it later. Again, kind of a more close up on the stand that I built and I'll talk about that again later in the video. I labeled these parts because it becomes really confusing which part is which and just kind of showing for reference the size of this as it starts coming together. Hey everybody, so part 26 um, was a bit of a doozy. Now that I'm sort of at the end of it, it's all kind of making sense, but there's a lot of really simple but confusing parts to this. So first off, let me just kind of share with you the jig that I built here. Um, this is just scrap two by four. And then I just use these two holes. Uh, I know these two holes are important. I can't say that they're more or less important than these but I just felt like I wanna run bolts through this as little as possible. So I use these two holes, they're fine, and I just built you know, maybe six inches off the ground. Super simple, and it holds it great, super secure. So here's kind of what I've learned here. Um, pretty basic construction methods, but it's very complicated about what to dimple and what not to dimple. So first things first, there's a lot of confusion on this part right here. Um, I have it written down. What is that? That's 1018 L and R. You eventually will dimple everything on the face of it. And eventually you will dimple the bottom, the bottom flange. But for right now, you first thing you do is you don't dimple the bottom flange until it's on because you want to final drill your bottom skin before you dimple. So that's what gets confusing is basically everything on these bottom flanges will get dimpled and you kind of question yourself as to why you're not dimpling them earlier on. But basically you'll come back through with your squeezer and dimple them later. So don't freak out too much about bottom skins. While we're talking about bottom skin dimples, you will countersink wherever there's a a second piece of metal, those will countersink, not dimple. So don't freak out about that because in your head, you're like, I wanna dimple those before I put them in here. The second thing also is, you, even though this is thick, I think this was 0.4, and, or I think this was 0.32, so this was obvious that you were gonna dimple it, but I think this was 0.4, so it was kind of right on the edge. Uh, I test countersunk a few holes and I wasn't happy with it. So I went back, I dimpled it. Um, so my suggestion, and I spoke to Vans and Vans was like, well, you can kind of do either one that you want because the instructions aren't super clear. It does eventually say dimple everything except the spar, which you countersink. Um, but it's like the last sentence on the last page and I called them before I got to that. So I, I'm, I went ahead and I dimpled. There's a few holes that I countersunk, but I went ahead and I dimpled this part. Obviously then this is so thick, you're gonna countersink this. No question about it. So now there's one other part that's confusing to people, which is this part. Now, from the people I've spoken to, my understanding is you dimple all of the number or the number 40 holes, the holes for the three rivets, 
but you do not dimple the number 30 holes, the holes for the number four rivets. You do, there's a row right here and it gets confusing right here as to which one is which, but you do not dimple those maybe later or maybe you countersink them, I don't know. But basically you dimple <clears throat> all of these before you start building it up. It's not very clear in the instructions. And then you also um, dimple all of these, but again, that's a number 30 hole, so you don't dimple that on either part of this. And then the rest of it's pretty straightforward. I had a lot of problems with these. Holes not lining up, it's thin metal. So I basically just had to re-drill all of them and make the holes a little bigger. Um, but you might run into the same thing. Other than that, again, that's what slowed me down a lot on this step was, or in this whole section, what to dimple, what not to dimple. So just kind of, I think if you watch this video that I just made for you a couple more times, you'll start to figure it out that all of the bottom stuff gets dimpled later. Dimple, countersink where they intersect, dimple this piece, countersink the spar, and you should be fine. So now the only other gotcha, which I'll insert a video here right now, is to start thinking about comm placement. I'm doing both my comms on the bottom. Uh, I know that there's debate about that. I'm willing to accept it. So you'll see a video about putting the comms here and here about how I did that. The next thing I need to figure out is um, transponder and ADSB. I'm probably going to put up front, I'm going to put one transponder up front, one ADSB up front under the uh, pilot seats. And then that's going to do it. Or I might put a. Um, one of the transponders back here and one up front. I haven't decided on that yet, um, but I think I can cross that bridge later. There's more room to work in there if I have to. So that's about it. Uh, I'm gonna insert that palm antenna supplement and then I'll let you know when this is all bottom skinned up and riveted and all that. Hey, so I thought it would be important to talk about what I'm doing with these doublers for the comm antennas. Um, I did decide I want to do both of my comm antennas under the airplane. I do understand the risk of not being able to pick up ground clearance, potentially. Um, I'm doing my IFR training right now, and I've spoken to a lot of IFR pilots. They said most of the time they're just calling on their cell phone anyways. And so for the once in a while that I run into that situation, so be it. My tech counselor also said that a lot of times if you just turn the airplane like five or 10 degrees, you'll pick up the radio signal. Sometimes it just interferes with the building or something. So I'm willing to take that risk to not have an antenna farm on the top of my airplane. But here's what I'm doing. I'll put the link to the blog that I got this from and then a bunch of the people in the Facebook group really helped me out with this. So this doubler comes from Steinair. Yes, it was $30 plus $5 in shipping. Well, I ordered two, almost 10 bucks in shipping. So yes, I understand. But honestly, <clears throat> I didn't wanna make it myself. I didn't have metal this thick. I think this is 060. I just didn't want to deal with it. So then I needed to make a spacer. So I'll show you what's happening here. Um, so we're in the third bay. One, two, three, under the rear seat. This goes here. I lined it up with, so you can kind of see like that. Um... And then this piece is what will go behind it. Sorry, it's hard with one hand. Uh, to, to match up with the thickness for the flange. Um, so then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my grid here now. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So then I'll probably do... One, two, three, so there'll be four across the top, five down, four, and then I will um, start, you know, countersinking and all that stuff. 
So then once I have all of the holes drilled in here, then I could match it up to the, the spacer. Okay, so in that last section, you saw the doubler for the antenna in the third rib from the left. It actually should go in the second rib bay from the left to give the 36 inch spacing from left to right that you need on the other side. I wanted to clarify that for you. So now we'll keep going. Match it up to the, the spacer and then I can drill through the skin and do all that. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing there. I thought that would be a good little insert for this video um, starting to come together. Hey everybody, so um, she done. I'm gonna tease you about an upcoming video. I recruited neighbors and my wife, you'll see some of that footage here to help me with this, but also uh, Ken and Melissa, um, I'll put the name of their YouTube channel up right now. I forget the name of it. They're building a 14 here locally and um, they were awesome. They came over to help me with this last section here. Because this is, you just cannot do this alone. You just cannot reach around the airplane and do this alone. But section 26 is done. Um, in the earlier part of this video, I talked a lot about the challenges that I kind of experienced here and kind of working through it. The last part that I wanted to talk about here is kind of how I did these doublers. I'm going to put a picture up to kind of show you. But basically, it's a Steinair uh doubler for the i think it's the comment com antenna and then i had to create another little back piece because you can see here the flange if you just put the doubler in it wouldn't be flush against the flange so you need to insert another piece there that's the same thickness as this and then you can just run this doubler straight across and i'm really happy with it so I added a few extra holes. Actually, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the doubler only comes with the holes for the nut plates and a center hole here. And then I added all of the rivet holes. So I did those two. And then I'll show you kind of how it looks on this side now. So, um, I mean, it's stiff. Like it is, this is not gonna flex, bend, do anything. So. I mated it up with this flange, and then I added the perimeter rivets, and then I added the four rivets here between it. It will get its ground from the skin. So we will not be painting under here. It will get its ground from the skin. Um, or, well, no, because everything's primed, so it will get its ground from the skin. Um, that was something I thought about. And so yeah, that's about it. I think the earlier part of this covered everything. Of course, if you have any questions, reach out um, and let me know how I can help you. You can find me in the RV10 Facebook group. The name is Ryan Gromfin, um, but my I kind of go under Pilot Rhino in my YouTube channel. So moving on, now I'll tease you, Firewall. Firewall has been started because this took me like a month to finish this because once I got to this stage, I could only work on it when neighbors or wife or or friends were available to help. So I started working on the firewall. And uh, that'll be an upcoming video for you soon. Bye-bye.